What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds. So we're here again with part two of my Georgian mansion tutorial. So this is going to be about the coach house and the gardens. Uh, watch part one if you want to see how I built this amazing building here behind me. But this is going to be all about this building here and all the lands and the landscaping around. So without further ado, let's get into showing you guys what blocks you need to use and then let's get into the build. Right, okay, so these are the blocks you're going to need to be able to build the coach house. I haven't actually put out any blocks for building the garden because the garden is very much just a guideline as to how to build it. It's not a tutorial as such, but the uh, coach house is. So for the coach house, the main building block again is the same grey as we did for the main house, and you need 321 of those. Uh, for the andesite, the polished andesite, you need a stack. For the roof, we are using stone brick slabs again, 208 of those. And then to cap those off, you need some polished diorite slabs, 35 of those. For the bits above the doorways, you want 14 stripped dark oak uh, logs. Windows, you need 28 white stained glass planes. Uh, 34 of these to, to form the door. These are spruce trap doors and then the spruce doors for the actual doors themselves. So without further ado, let's get into the build and I show you guys how to build the coach house and then show you how I do the garden. So let's jump into that. Right, without further ado, let's get into building this beautiful coach house, which is not a garage. And I have to stipulate that because uh, I believe people will probably comment going, hey, that looks like a double garage. But I believe that the term garage and the idea of how we look at garages in this day and age comes across from what coach houses were built like. So that's my understanding. I believe we are just sort of seeing the two as the same. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into actually measuring this thing. So it's 18 blocks along the front here. And you drop back nine blocks this way. Uh, and then this little section over here is four blocks back. And then it should be six across here like that. And then also six across the back like that now this is just like a little shed uh more of an annex uh you can put a wall in between there and there'll be a door there and a door there so what this is this building's actually on the outside of the property but obviously has access into the property itself so when we come to do the the fence line and the uh, stone wall in a bit you'll uh, you'll see that yeah the wall comes up to about here and this is all in the property and this is all external because we've got this little alleyway road at the back here uh, so I'm obviously just using a spade to make this into a dirt track and that's what we'll be doing inside the building as well um, because that just it's, it's a great effect and it really does work as just making like a little dirt path so we're going to carry on with that right so let's get into actually building this coach house so we're using the same design as the main house going to use this light gray concrete as the main block so you place two on the edge here that brings you into where the first doorway is going to go so knock out five blocks there leave three block uh, four blocks between each door and we do the same over here so one two three four five on this one knock out the middle block like that well one of the middle blocks and that becomes a doorway to access this sort of uh, coach area so this building is going to have accommodation above so it's a two-story building but it's a fairly basic uh, affair on this one so in the ground we're going to grab out some more polished andesite and place those down to act as a sort of a, a break between a, a threshold between the, the dirt path and the actual interior and the inside here you want to also again just, I know we're sort of breaking up the paths, but the idea is this bit in here isn't going to get wet if this does uh, sort of thing. And this is where they keep the horses and the carriages. So it's, it makes more sense for it to be like this. Uh, you can obviously put a bit of texture in it if you wish. Let's just clear all this out. Um, and then this bit here is going to have the staircase in to be able to access upstairs. There'll also be an access room in here as well. Um, but again, you guys can decide how you wish to build this little stables. Um, with, with, with horses and that inside. I don't tend to do any interiors for this sort of thing. Great, so that's what we're looking at now, just a sort of base. So we're going to come around, fill up all the walls with this light grey concrete powder. Right, so what I've done there is just move that over one block. Uh, gives you this exit access to this wall here if you need it. But yeah, so that's our basic outline of the building. What we need to do next is grab out some trap doors. So we're going to use spruce trap doors along with some oak trap doors. And the spruce trap doors are placed back up against like that. And then you open them all back up again and place another course on top of that. So we've got this going on like this. So you've got yourself a door. And then on the third level in here, you need to be placing some oak trap doors to act as little windows. 
perfect, like that. Now we build up the wall to the same height, uh, leaving this block empty there, and it's the same this side when you get up to that level. Now that's because a across the front of the doorway we're going to place in a nice dark oak lintel. So this is just very typical of these sorts of buildings, they have this wooden uh, beam across the front because this is such a wide open space you wouldn't be able to span it with uh, just bricks or anything like that so you need a lintel in there and it's again repeat a rinse and repeat on the other side so it's five across there and then you place another course on top of that shift click as you place it down no we've destroyed some path uh, only problem with grass path if if you obviously destroy a piece you didn't want to then it's a, a problem because you can't really get it back unless you just regrow some grass on it or you've got a silk touch pickaxe that you can move some stuff across from. For me, I'm just going to leave it like that now. It gives a little bit of texture to this somewhat overpowering colour, okay. And there's that, and it's the same again, so up to there, uh, across. I just did uh, one extra block over that side to cover up that for a second. So we're going to place in here a door going to go for a spruce store rather than the dark oak ones we have been using, place it back one block and then fill this space in with the concrete powder. Now obviously that doorway, if it's destroyed, this all comes tumbling down anyway, but that's there to hold up the uh, concrete powder. And then it's just finishing off these side walls. You can put a window in here if you wish, I'm not going to. Might put one around the other side when we get to the second floor. Right, so that is the ground floor level done for this side. Just going to move on over now to this little cabin section, well this little out, outbuilding section. Do the same again, get the threshold in there. Uh, this one can have a floor of maybe andesite mixed with polished andesite. I say maybe, I haven't actually chosen the floor for this place because I kind of forgot about it when I was doing the planning for this. I went, oh yeah, there was a little building on the side that I'd done. So let's just fill this floor in with a bit of textured floor like that. And then you grab back out your spruce store, put another spruce store in there and one in there. And then this goes up one more block level to here, and it's the same height as uh, the rest of the walls, but then, so you count one, two, and then on top of that we're going to be placing some slabs. We're going to go for the same motif as the main house roof, so that is the polished diorite slab and the stone brick slab, and we'll just place it on the corners like so, and build a little hipped roof. And there you have it, so that's the kind of thing you want to do for that, it's just a nice little side roof. Uh, under here obviously place that bit of concrete powder and the same again with this door now you've got a bit of more support under it yes this wall looks a bit plain we're going to get around to detailing with that later on just with a bit of uh, foliage on there um, and then yeah so that's where the, the horses are stored where the carriages are stored and obviously you can detail that how you wish so let's move on up now to the second floor on this one so it's another course of oh that's not the right one another course of uh, light grey concrete powder all the way around we'll get up to there we'll do the windows here at the front so it's just very basic uh, Georgian styled windows so two wide there so we count in two blocks two and then two blocks again and another two blocks and another two blocks and then another two blocks so because we've got 18 across it's all uh, uniformly centered so we got four windows of two width each and in those windows you'll be placing in some white stained glass so we can match the same motif as the house behind so there we go, these windows are just two blocks high and they haven't really got any detailings around them uh, because that's kind of what the style was going for. This is a very basic outbuilding. Uh, it's just meant to match the exterior of the house behind it. So what we do now is obviously fill up all the walls. So we're going to jump back to once these walls are filled up and then we'll get the roof on this one. Right, so that's the walls filled up here. I'll come around to the back because I'm going to place in some windows. So we count in one, two, three, four, five from here and knock out some space for some windows so it's the same height again just two blocks high and then you've got your grey concrete again and then from this side we're counting one two three and then knock out some more here so these ones are placed a little bit more arbitrarily uh, these would just be based upon what rooms are in here rather than a formal arrangement at the front and then you count across three again and that sort of places them quite evenly spread across here with these two being two blocks apart and that one sort of centered where it is Yep, that's perfectly fine. So you can place those windows wherever your rooms take you. So just go fill in this little corner over here and then we're gonna get this roof on. Cool, right, so that's that building completely finished. All that's left to do is get the roof on and then add a few drain pipes as a little bit of detailing along here. So to start the roof off, you place your 
stone slab, uh, stone brick slabs uh, on, on the actual top level of the wall, carried it all the way around. And it's the same again with the main building. We're going to build a hip roof. So start off in the corners like this, and then you work your way up to the center with these corner stones. So we've got that one and then that one. So I'm going to jump into a quick little time lapse to get this roof done as I find they're probably the best way to show it off uh, rather than me <laughs> messing about with slabs. So we're going to get back to that once we've done that roof. Right, so there we have the roof and it is currently one, two, three, four, five blocks to the actual ridge. Now all that's left to do on this build is add in the chimneys. So we've got two high um, blocks of grey concrete powder there and you want to grab out an anvil again just to use as the chimney pot and then it's the same over this side placing two, just two in from the edge of the actual building wall. And there we go. So we have our Georgian, uh, yeah, we have our Georgian coach house. Looks good. I like it. It's simple. It's effective. Hasn't been asking too much for detail. And I think it just fits this style really well. So it's time now to crack on with the garden planning. Uh, first of all, we need to actually line out where the driveway is going to go. So let's get in with a diamond shovel here. And I'm going to say at this point here this is the main entrance into the actual um, property so we're going to grab out one of these and use it as um, a fence post so there and there and then along the actual exterior what I'm going to do is place down a wall made out of cobble and um, dead coral dead tube coral cobble and andesite and now this is my idea of making a sort of stone brick wall um, you guys can do it however you wish, but this is what I like to do. So I'm going to place it sort of arbitrarily and then go back and fill in the gaps with some more of the other blocks. So I'm going to quickly jump to having that wall done so you don't have to watch me randomly placing blocks around. So I'll see you once the wall is in place. So I was just going to say if you are also a user of World Edit, this can be done fairly simply by using this command here. So I tend to use a mixture of uh, block IDs and the blocks names and what this will give you is an evenly spread out distribution of cobble, uh, dead tube coral blocks and then andesite. Uh, so this is how it works and you just make this wall two blocks high all the way around the property and then you place that there and you turn it in to this lovely wall. Now I've chosen two blocks high because it's a bit of a more discreet property and then we can always get some bushes and stuff going on top to make it look a little bit more fancy anyway this wall around this side is going to be one block high um, because this is sort of a different uh, level here you can see the levels changed and it's all been taken out of this garden level here so I'm going to carry on this wall around and then we jump back to where we have the front gate again okay and so we're back at the front gate here a little thing on this side note here we need to build up this wall so it's actually uh, one block high again we're going to put a hedge around the back here so I'm just using my world edit command just to populate this one out uh, and then when we get to here we'll do the same again just carry it on round as it was one block high and then put a hedge all the way around this bit so it's a bit more discreet up through here perfect stuff so that's our property lined out you can see I've put in a straight line over here I wanted to come around and finish this off on camera because you need to sort of join it in one block back from the face of this building. So let's just come over here and then just place it into the ground like so. Uh, this wall can also be two blocks high as well so this is your main back boundary wall so we don't really want anyone climbing over that. And the same again here along this edge like so. Uh, you can obviously choose how big your boundary wall is you've got a property uh, based out for it I've just done this arbitrarily we've got a nice little corridor through here of trees um, and that's just a way of setting it all out so that's the kind of idea we're going for the house has been built quite far over on the left hand side of this plot uh, and then we give us some nice space in the front here to have a bit of a driveway now you may see the level difference here between the, the 
base of what will become the garden and the house. And we'll get on to that later on as to how we can build the house into this a bit more um, once we've done the little driveway bit. So let's jump into that. Right, okay, so we're over here. Time to place in a few of the first blocks for this driveway. So I'm taking out some stone uh, and some andesite. Just placing a little hard standing here in front of the door because the rest of this area is going to be um, made out of dirt path. So we kind of need a little a little bit where you would sort of receive your guests where it's not so muddy in the winter. So as I said, the rest of it's going to be made out of stone path, uh, grass path, sorry. I wish we had a stone path. I think we originally did. When they brought out the whole path making thing within Minecraft with the, with the um, it was all like a stone texture before. It was horrible, but yeah, anyway, that's that's a blast from the past. What we're doing here is placing a little flower bed in. So I'm using um, andesite again, polished andesite, just to act as a small little um, border around what would become the driveway and the edge of this area. And now along this edge here, we want to be placing down some podsol if you have that. If not, don't worry. And that will just act as a little bed for when we place the uh, bushes in to grow up from. It just makes it a little bit more interesting than having it as pure dirt, uh, I find, because obviously with dirt, it just doesn't look great. It doesn't look natural underneath um, a bush. So I tend to use oak leaves and a bit of spruce. Mix and match those up between each other just to give a bit more of a depth of colour in here. So same again. And then what you want to do is just run across and, and throw leaves at the wall, hoping some stick and look good. You can make some sections two blocks thick so it looks a bit denser. And yeah, just go across and add all of that detail in. So I, I tend to do a lot of this all by hand without using world edit because placing trees is, is nice, uh, bushes is nice. Speaking of trees, uh, there will be some trees placed around and I will just grow them from saplings. I do tend to use world edit to grow big trees. I know it's cheating, but uh, we'll do what we can with some saplings. Right, now getting into cutting out the path all the way up to the edge of the bushes. Uh, and you can place this as obviously as far back from the road as you want when you're building your house. So we haven't really got any dimensions here. This is all more of a guide as to how I build gardens rather than a, a pure block by block tutorial size and dimensions for this. I hope that's what you guys wanted really. Um, I think this is quite an interesting way of showing it off because this is my thought process behind a lot of this whenever I'm doing these builds. So we're going to carry this up all the way to the edge of this doorway here and it will also be around here because in this corner I'm going to place some more bushes and then we can see where that goes. So over here get some podsol out again as that a little bit of extra detail like I mentioned. You can see we're floating here above the ground because I haven't planned this out properly. And there we go, a bit more privacy on that end and that corner as well. So when it comes to getting this path all the way up, what I say to do is to build it all the way up to about here and cut out all of this. And now this is where you would receive, obviously in, in the sort of early 20th century, your cars are a thing, so cars would come in here, park up and pick up and drop off. And it would happen in the, in the modern day as well, if this house is still in use. But uh, previously in its old life, again, this would have been used as a way to receive guests before their coaches were taken off round to the coach house and stored in there for the longevity of the evening. So that's what you're looking at for your little pathway. Uh, I know it looks a little bit basic, a little bit, you know, uh, without detail, but it works, I think. So along the edge of here, what you want to do is grab out some stone and some gravel as well. Always like a bit of gravel just to add in a bit more density. And then you just want to place a little two, maybe at some points, three wide path of gravel and stone all the way along the edge of here. And what this will do is just add a little bit of a hard boundary between the path, the dirt path, and this area. And this will follow all the way around to the back of the house. So follow it all the way around, and then you've got this little side one-way bit down here because you need access from all sides into the gardens, or at least that's kind of how I build stuff. And now you can remove all of this dirt under here as well and replace it with some stone and a bit of gravel. So I'm going to get this filled in and we'll jump back over to when that's done so we can do this little garden bit over here. Right, okay, so that's us with this little path round here. That's just a way to show this is a bit more of a hard standing due to uh, the fact that service people and service buildings, um, vehicles will probably come down here and use this. And you can carry this on around all of this as it sort of breaks up 
the stone, uh, the dirt path going up against, right up against the the, um, the stone finishings there. So coming around here, placing a bit more dirt there just to give a nice edge. This was going to be all built up to about here of the same pathway because this is all part of the drive. You would then get your delivery vehicles in if you require stuff like I don't know milk. Maybe a Tesco's delivery. I guess that wouldn't have existed in 1912 when I'm building this. But yeah, so that's what that is up there as well. So when they get that all dug out, quickly jump to that being done. Okay, and there's that. And you would find houses of this period to always have big old driveways like this. Uh, like I said, just to receive vehicles and people. And I think this looks great. And obviously, like I said, you can add some details to it, maybe a bit of gravel or something in there if you wished. So we're going to come around now to this back part. Um, and what you want to do is grab out the same wall material as we made this one in part one. So that's your stone stairs and then your stone slabs. And then this is just going to go around a little bit on the corner there. You want to grab out some polished andesite again. Use that as a little stop piece there. And this carries on all the way back up to the path like that. And we're going to dig out all of that as pathway again. And you sort of end up with this little private garden at the back here. And this would be where the service... Um, workers would come up and, and relax and just have a, a moment because it's sort of a more secluded uh, garden from the rest of the house and it's north facing as well so it wouldn't get much light um, and these types of houses have all been built with their sort of main gardens facing south and that's obviously so you can gain as much sunlight as you should want throughout the day uh, midday sun would be there constantly and then obviously you get the evening suns and that and that's a lot of planning to do with towns and buildings have all been based around how to get the maximum amount of light into a building and into a garden uh, throughout the day before electric lights are invented. So there's that. Okay, so in the corner you can see now we've got this nice little bit of land to have some stuff placed in it. So what I'm going to do is grab out a couple of saplings. I'm going to use just the normal saplings if I can actually find where they are. There we are. So we're going to use some oak saplings and then some bone mill and just put some saplings around and see what we get. I'm not anticipating we're going to always get the large trees. I know you can do something like that to maybe, maybe, <laughs> I thought. There we go. So we get, get ourselves some reasonable size trees. There we go. And then obviously go around and bone mill the ground and get yourself a bit of grass up here as well. I know it's quite nice to have completely clean grass and, uh, you know, clear area, but a little bit of trees and a little bit of foliage also really helps set off having smaller grass pieces. Get rid of all the long grass because it doesn't always look great. It makes it look a bit overgrown. With a bit of normal grass, there we go, big tree, you get a bit more of a sort of meadow effect going on and a bit more natural look to it, like that. I'll put another tree here as well, just to help a bit more boundary protection there. So we've got a nice little area to come out and, and walk around in, take a sort of break from working in the kitchen quite nice people these these house owners to have that sort of area anyway coming up to the side of the coach house now can be placing a uh, a bit of vines like ivy up here i tend to actually use whole block leaves rather than going for vines because i'm not really a fan of vines i find they don't have the right depth you're looking for and nor do they really um actually look any good so that this area has been taken over by some vines and some and some bushes i haven't placed any pods under there but you can do it's mainly because this area won't be seen uh, so you can sort of get away with that uh, and you can always have this growing round into this part of the building as well because that's kind of what would happen and it seemed as quite fashionable back in the day to have leaves and and ivy growing across the building unfortunately it does damage the building and that was discovered later on once all the mortar collapsed and walls had to be rebuilt because the ivy had got into it so I'm going to be placing down a little drain pipe here now. What I tend to do for that is take out a hopper and then I take some dark oak fence as well and break away that first slab we put down. So you can place a hopper on top of the uh, dark oak fence and then place that all the way down. What we want to do here is place a bit of polished andesite on the base so it looks like it's got a little drain to go through. Uh, and we'll also come around here and do one on this bit of the wall as well. I say in that corner there just to add a bit more depth to the building um, there we go lovely stuff so there we are with those ones that's the, co the, the coach house very much done and this back garden brought up to quite a nice level of looking quite grand so it's time now to move our attention towards the front door again and we've got this little place here so as I was mentioning before 
it's quite fashionable to have buildings with ivy and trees growing all around them so that's what we're going to do here as well add a little bit of color to this gray drab uh, looking build but i like it i actually like i like how this offsets the gray because it's 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 obviously that green that color that naturalness rather than it looking like it has been built out of stone and and maybe even a bit soviet as some people were saying before when i showed it off but I like it. I think I think this this grey this drab look really does suit this style of building. There we go. So you kind of want to build it look, looking like it had grown around something. So we got it going around that window there. We're gonna have a bit more coming up here into this little cornice piece and over the front there. And yeah, that's kind of where we're at with this front garden bit. Uh, put a bit more in there. Uh, maybe even maybe even grab out some taller plants. Right, let's go for a rose bush, shall we, and place that in there and there. And hey presto, you've got yourself a rather nice looking front of the building. Lovely little garden and a big old driveway. So the next part is to jump down and do the front garden section, the main part of the house. So we're going to start off by levelling out this bit of land here. So as I mentioned, we got ourselves like a little lower section here for the lawn. So what we want to do is carry this path on a round until you get to the side of the building. You can leave a little gap here now for a bit of greenery, a bit of foliage in there, maybe even a tree. But this carries on all the way up to the edge of the building like this. And then here you place a pillar of andesite like so. And that acts as a little um, edge piece for a stairway we're gonna put in here. So at an angle, because angles are cool and this will look good, uh, you want to be placing some andesite slabs, so like that and like that, and then below it as well, so we fill in these little gaps down here. Now obviously what you're seeing me doing here is taking out little bits of dirt. We are going to need to move quite a lot of this dirt now. This will need to be down to the same level as here, so it will look nice and we can expose some of these little windows in the basement which is again a nice way to get some light into the where the service workers will be but over here we need to finish off this wall like so and on top of that we'll be placing the stone stone stairs and stone slabs arrangement we've had going throughout this whole build for a nice way of building a little wall so that goes in like so all the way up to there where we place that and underneath this, you'll want to place some more smooth and uh, polished andesite, like I have there. And that just again acts as a nice little detail. Uh, we'll have to do the same here. This wall here probably should be up to about two blocks high again, just to keep out those nosy neighbours. We know we all have them. And there we are. So coming around to all of this, we need to dig it all out, uh, placing this wall a little bit deeper because it's quite a high retaining wall. And yeah, so I'm going to jump cut to having this dirt all chiseled out so we can get that started. And then we'll start on laying out the lawn, getting a few of the flower beds in and placing a lovely little table in there. So I'm going to jump cut to having this all removed and then we'll get on with that. Okay, so there we have the building now exposed at the base like so. And you can see I've done a course of stone brick, oh sorry, stone underneath the andesite uh, section there. And that just helps bring out the basement level a bit more. We've cut it up to about here as well on this side. So what you want to do again is exactly the same motif as we've done around the other side. Uh, and you can have a three block gap in the middle for some either some slabs or some stairs. I'm going to use some slabs here because I like the slope it gives, the smaller gradient. Uh, and then you want to place some stairs in there with a the piece of andesite either side. And you can probably remove that piece there from the wall just so you get that little extra bit of depth on there as well. Uh, and then it's stone slabs across the top. And you've got again a nice little private area by that window over there and a lovely way down into the lowered level of the lawn so what we want to do here now underneath this window is as we've done above make this into a two wide window but we're going to have to dig out a section of the ground so we're going to dig it all the way out to about here and replace a lot of this with stone anyway I'll show you what we do with this path in a moment. We have a path that runs all the way around the front of this house here. About five blocks wide. But down here, okay, so one block down from the base here. We get this little skylight into the basement. Oh, look, there's the basement coming through. And we place two blocks like so. Dig out all of this and replace it with stone. 
And then we want to grab out some stairs. Again, replace all that with stone, so at least it looks like it's been built up. And then we want to place that with some uh, polished andesite stairs, like that, like that, and then, oh, can't get back up, and then like that. There we are. So you've got like a little trough here that can get some light into it. Um, fill in those corners, you don't want stairs on those corners. And there you have, that's how that window goes there, and you get a nice little nice little look. It's, it's quite different. A lot of light will now come into this basement from here, even if you can't actually see the light uh, from the window, sorry, from see the window from the ground level. So in terms of this path, what we want to do is grab out some more polished andesite and sort of dot it around the place again. <laughs> I know I keep doing this and it's it's hard to explain exactly how to do it but it is just a arbitrarily placing blocks around um, but you want to sort of come out maybe one two three four five six from the building and that'll be the edge of the lawn there and this carries on round so we want to sort of follow the outline of the building so you get a nice nice shape in your in your garden path that goes about there it's the same again round to there and there and then follow this down this side until you get to about this corner here so you see the shape of the building comes out in the floor there so it goes back into like that perfect so it throughout this you just go through knock out some bits you want to place some polished andesite into like that you know be liberal with it you don't have to um get too much caught up into there and we'll do the same here with this window just so we can repeat that so you place too high window in there remove all of this replace it with stone just so it looks a bit better and then around the edges you want to place some oh we haven't got it with us some polished and site stairs one on the corner there two at the back here one on the corner there and then fill in the rest of this with stone like that oh, that's probably too far back actually there we go perfect and then fill in the rest with stone so it can match in with this path we're building around here that's not stone why is that block there it keeps appearing in my um in my buildings right and then do something like this so we're gonna have a path that carries on from there down to the front of the garden we'll get that placed in in a bit just gonna fill in the rest of this so i'm gonna fill in the rest of this and then jump cut to the next section which will be the lawn Right, okay, so that's the pathway at the front of the building filled in. What we want to do is just arbitrarily place a sort of diagonal path around to about here and then carry it on. Just keep breaking out bits of dirt. Uh, you don't have to be anywhere near accurate with any of this. This is all about making it look a bit more natural. Like someone's walked around the, the garden and gone, right, let's have a path this sort of size. So you want to sort of keep it close, but not too close to the wall. Um, I'm going to fill in this a bit more. Because we're going to get a lawn in here. We can have it a bit straighter down there, so it matches that a little bit. Uh, maybe drop out this bottom bit here. So this is what I mean by, this is a more of a guide than a tutorial of this section. Just because of how you can go about doing your gardens, it's all up to you. But I like to just place in bits of pathway like this uh, let's fill in that there we go so what you want to do with this path is carry it up around here so let's carry on maybe dropping down once more and dropping down once more here where the fence drops down and behind this you know go all the way back up this can be a straight edge here because this is a bit more smarter this goes straight up onto that walkway up there so this pathway is going to be exactly the same as what we've just done around here with stone and andesite so i'm going to jump cut to having that filled in so we can get on with shaping out the lawn right okay so that's that done just going to come back up to the here make this section here a little bit wider uh i don't know it just looks a bit better if it was a bit more wider up around there there we go and that snakes in around the bottom of the garden and back up to the edge of the house there so what we're going to do now is place in a stripy lawn. Uh, I think these always look really quite good in game. So what I'm going to do for this is use some green concrete powder because it actually has a very similar texture to that of the top. Well, to that of grass. Ish. I think it works. So what I do is just dig out a whole straight line and then backpedal it 
and place all of this down there so it looks like someone's gone through and given your lawn a good old mowing and striped it. And this is something you, I tend to do only on large houses that have lots of green space because it makes it look really quite interesting and nice. Now, the only other thing I want to do about this lawn is show you where a lawn ornament sort of section can go. So over here in this area where it's a little bit wider, I'm going to grab out some polished andesite again and place it kind of semi-arbitrarily so it becomes like a little, a little planter in there. Uh, you can obviously reshape it if you wish, but okay, we're, we're going to go with that. Let's go for a, let's go for an actual shape this time, uh, and then in there place some pod salt. And what I am going to do is just place a couple of leaves and bushes in here, but I'm also going to be putting in some dark oak fences to act as like it has become a little bit of a tree here, uh, and then put some put some oak leaves around it. And if you look at any sort of house, they always seem to have these trees or these bushes in the middle of um in the middle of their lawns and it just breaks it up a little bit so there's that and now we're going to commence with carrying on filling this in so let's jump cut to having this whole lawn filled in and then we'll put the final little details on there and get some bushes around the place right okay so that's the lawn completely covered now you can see around the little planter here i've actually stepped back one with the stripes and that's just to show that the lawnmower can't get there so it adds a little bit more realism in there so what you can do next is grab yourself out some grass uh, or you can take a bit of bone meal to it but I'm going to try and find where the grass is, there it is, a bit of tall grass and then just, actually no we don't want tall grass, there it is, grass just try, grab out a bit of grass and go round and place these down so this actual lawn gets a little bit more texture, a bit more depth because yes it is quite nice having a nice fully mowed lawn but you're always going to have those bits of grass that stick up and have a slight different look to it there we are, so this lawn's looking really nice, looking quite good, especially in the afternoon sun, that would look amazing place to sit. So all that's left to do now is get the actual detailings around the edge, the boundary edge. So what I'm going to do is come over into this corner here, get out my bone mill and also some uh, saplings. But what I will also do is for those guys that are using World Edit, this is a command that I tend to use to place trees. So you do slash tree and then big, if I can spell, big tree. So that has now been bound to this shovel and then you just go over here, right click down and you, um, you get yourself a big tree. And you can do that all the way around and you get yourself a nice little area of trees that are clumped together and become a bit more realistic looking. Obviously you can go around and attempt to get one with this, but they always end up being quite small because of the way. Okay, that looks a bit better. But yeah, so that's if you are using World Edit and you've got access to that, give it a go. It's always quite a fun one to do. That's not gonna grow there. Same again here, just keep going around and placing trees down. Trees are always good as little boundary hiders. We're gonna put one of these big trees in the corner here. Uh, and then also up on this little patch of grass, again, trees. Ah, we've got a big tree growing there. And that, and that just helps hide this part of the garden from the edge of the road. And look at this, we're getting there, almost there. So the next stage is to go around and bone mill a lot of this area. Like I said earlier on, you come back and you get rid of all of that. Um, that you don't wish, like the long grass and that. But I think that probably requires a tree there. There we go, a little bush of a tree. Yeah, go back round, knock off all of the tops of these bushes, uh, so these tall trees. And then what you can do as well, and I probably suggest it, is you go round, you grab out some more of this, more leaves, and you build yourself a nice high bush fence, uh, hedge. Bush hedge, there we go, that's the, that's the word, a bushy hedge. And then we go around, placing that on the edge, and this gives you a, a, even more privacy but also it gives you a nice look from the house. So when you're standing here, looking down, you're not just going to look at this, this stone brick wall, even though we've tried to make it look quite interesting. Um, this will actually just add to helping texture it and keeping it look a bit more like it's part of the garden rather than if it was just a stone wall. So we're going to go on all the way around. You don't have to fully cover this whole wall line, just enough to make it look a bit cool. So there's one last bit I want to show you guys, uh, and that's what to do with the little area up around the back of the house. Uh, I haven't done anything with it in my actual world, 
So this is gonna be a little bit of fun just off the cusp and so try and figure out what to do with it. So let's go on over to here. Now this is a nice little place. You can come sit here. So I reckon what we could do is place a little lawn chair up here or a little ornamental table. So what you wanna do is grab out some of these um, scaffolding and this will make a quite a nice wicker table. And then to complement that, I think some birch uh, slabs will go quite nicely. So one there, one there, and maybe one that's being pushed back uh, over here. And then around those, you can place some birch signs, if we can find them. Birch signs. And obviously you don't want to type anything on them. And this gives you a nice little wicker chair that you can also oh, build down on the lawn as well because these are very period. Uh, in the late 19th century, wicker became a fashionable item. So people were buying these wicker tables and wicker chairs up. So there's a little one up there, and then you can have one maybe over here, in a bit more of your private garden. If you wanna sit down here, listen to the happenings and goings on of the road over there. So go on around and place those signs. And that about wraps up the actual building aspect of this little uh, garden tutorial. I hope you guys have learned some little tips and tricks there on how to do gardens or you know answer some questions about how I do my landscaping. For me I actually enjoy landscaping a lot and it's something I wish I do a bit more of. Um, I don't know what I've just done there. <laughs> uh, so yes if you guys want to see a bit more of my landscaping videos and sort of ideas then please comment below we can get that done. Uh, get rid of that one and we can see what we can do with that. But yes, I think it's time to show this off in shaders so we can get a good old look around. So let's just jump into some BSL shaders. And there we have it. What a beautiful, beautiful looking house in this morning sunrise. You come out to your garden, you go, ooh, uh, this, is, this is a lovely place. Oh, look, you can come over here and you can have your morning cup of coffee. Let's grab out a flower pot because flower pots are the best coffee mugs. Uh, I can't find one. Let's just put a bell on the table. Sit here in the morning, ring your ring your bell, and just enjoy your beautiful private garden while enjoying the hustle and bustle of the town as it goes by. What a house to live in. Honestly, I, I actually loved building this house. And I think it's come out really well. This grey is not overpowering, it's very subtle. And once you get round to this side with the coach house over here, you've got your proper realism kick there. And also the little area down here of the basement with all of the little bits and bobs in here. You can really see yourself living in this house and using it for whatever you wish to use it for. So guys, thank you all for watching this amazing tutorial on this amazing house. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed giving it to you. So I will see you all next time with another one of these tutorials. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you soon.